Hi everyone, we've got some lovely bluebell woods today. So you're going to draw out your path lines, a couple of the bigger tree trunks, you can do a couple of the little tree trunks in the background as well, and then you've got a rough horizon line just there. Don't worry about all the detail. Then what I've done with a little bit of masking fluid is I've just created some light on the leaves that are quite close. So by those, it's these little bits here and here. You don't have to get them all, just a few, just to indicate the light. And then I've also done a few bits of masking fluid dabs, um, nothing too precise for the bluebells in the foreground. So just a few little bits here and there. Colours wise, we've got cobalt blue. So I've mixed plenty of each of these up. Gambo's yellow, a mixture of rose and cobalt blue, quite purpley blue colour for the bluebells. Sap green, I've got permanent rose and burnt sienna. That's a bit of colour ready for the path. And then sepia, that's pretty much neat on its own. Um, we're going to go in with that quite thick. Okay. So make sure your masking fluid's dry. I'm going to come over with a little bit of water. And we're going to go to that horizon line. So you don't need to worry about your tree trunks, come straight over those. Just going to get this background in. Make sure your brush is nice and clean. I'm going to come into the cobalt blue first of all, so that we need this little bit of background sky. doesn't need to be everywhere. Keep it nice and light, not too strong. Give my brush a little bit of a rinse. Just going to pick up a little bit of the gamboge. Not much water on the brush. And just dab that in. If it starts to mix on the paper as you're doing this, don't worry, it's going to make lovely greens, lovely spring greens, and that's going to work really nicely for distant trees. Again, you're not worrying about those tree trunks at all, coming straight over those. So you're just looking where the greens are and getting a little bit of that in. doesn't have to be everywhere. We're going to do a bit of sponging later. You don't want it to feel too dense with all these colours. And then I'm just touching in with a little bit of sap green as well. So I'm going to bring this along this horizon line. Make sure this horizon line isn't too straight. And then again dab. I've got my brush pointed upwards. Dabbing along.
and just a little bit here and there okay so I'll give that brush a rinse out and I'm going to swap down now to a line writer or a rigger depending on what you've got I've rinsed the brush off dabbed it off and then I've picked up some of the sepia now I always find it easier when I'm doing this to turn it upside down so I want some nice soft trees in here I've turned my photograph upside down as well I'm sure you can still see and we're, we're looking at these very distant ones now because the paint's thick it shouldn't explode too much if it does don't worry too much just keep dabbing off a little bit it's just getting the timing right if you really struggle you can pop a little bit of gum arabic in that will reduce the flow of the paint and stop it exploding or you can swap down to a detailer brush that will have less on and you're just going to pop in it doesn't matter if some of these lines break up a little bit as well because it tends to work quite well with the sponging it's broken up distant foliage remember you're thinking distant ones it's a bit trickier because of the camera tripod's in the way but I'm managing And you want to get as many of these in as you can whilst it's still nice and wet so that they're nice and soft in the distance. You can have some that are a bit bigger, some that are smaller. And a really nice indication. With lots and lots of distant trees. Okay, I'm going to dry that one off. Okay, so that one's nice and dry now. I'm going to come into this bottom section now. So plenty of water come to my round number 10 I'm going to pick up some of this purple first the beauty of the sponging is it does hide a multitude of sins in the end um, so it doesn't matter if you go a little bit wrong but what you want to do first of all is to get the bands of bluebells in if it spreads a bit further, don't panic. You're going to come in with the green later. And it's just, you need to try and keep the freshness of the, the purple as best you can. So you're working in bands. Again, you're not worrying about the trees. That'll all come later. tend to work in in swathes of colour so don't worry come straight across these trees I 
because we've mixed this purple it'll tend to split out a little bit which will work to our advantage it'll look really nice and give that brush a bit of a rinse out and I'm going to pick up some sap green now when I've done the arch of the path I've done the arch and then I've come in and created these little bits that are breaking into the pathway so I've got that pencil line to help me and I'm going to come up to each of these colours now so you'll find if you push down with a round sort of squiggly circular motion the colour won't spread too far Of course we've got all these little bluebells masked out in this foreground area and this is just all about getting a nice base on should be nice and, and manageable this as well because you're doing it in two sections rather than just a whole whole sheet this wetting wet green in. At that point as well I'm just going to take a few dabs of blue in. So this is the cardboard blue that we've used in the sky and I'm mainly looking to pop this in and these front sections just to give a little bit of shadow and definition there. Okay, then I'm going to pick up this Burnt Sienna Rose mix and it's going to seem really strong. Horizontal strokes so that it starts to feel more like a pathway and I want you to spread it far, the colour that you're using. So that you haven't got too much at this stage. Now complementary colours wise, a red and a green make a really nice shadow colour so you'll find that they'll blend together really nicely. keep blending that through then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the cobalt blue again just blend that through just to dull it in places so cobalt blue is a really nice natural shadow colour when it's mixed with rose So I don't want this to be too in your face, the pathway. So this is just knocking it back a bit along with the mix in the green, that blend at the side. It should work really nicely. Okay, so I'm going to dry that one off now. Okay, so that's dried off nicely now. I'm going to go back into the top section. So what I've got here is a number six, round number six, with a little bit of watered down sepia. I'm just going to do a little bit more tree definitions. I'm turning upside down again because I find it easier. I'm just going to pop in some trunks that are a little bit more defined so these are nice and pale but they've got hard edges so these are going to stand out just a little bit more you don't need a huge amount it's just about building up these layers
number six is great for this because you can just vary the pressure and it's just about the right size for the paper you want them to go in different directions you can have a few with a few branches coming out and you want them to come off the top of the page they need to start bigger at the bottom and get narrower but most of all they need to be random that's why different directions is good it's very easy to end up making a pattern And just keep them nice and light and go where you've gone before okay I'll dry that one off okay so before we get any more paint on I just want to try and lift these tree trunks out a little bit so I've not worried about them the whole time and I just want to lift them a little bit so all I'm doing now is applying water the main bit that I really need to lift is the bit where you've got the horizon line because that does tend to show even with darker paint if we go any further what tends to happen is you can't find your tree trunks that you've drawn in so it's a good idea to get them now this is also the point that you realize you've painted some trees over these tree trunks and you're going to lose those so just plenty of water what i'm doing is just agitating the surface especially where it is on that paper on that horizon line just to break that edge up there's a particularly light tree just here as well that I'm just gonna try and pull out a little bit I can just about still see my pencil line I've got some clean kitchen towel and I'm just dabbing that off I don't have to lift everything I just want that edge to be blurred which is what that's done If it hasn't done it enough, then you can go back in. Just lift it a little bit more. It's mainly that bit there that needs that lifting. That's good. Okay, so I've got a sponge here, natural sponge lots and lots of bobbly bits so that's what you want to do you want to wash the sponge wring it out really well then you want to dab it against some kitchen towel so you take off a lot of the moisture so it's 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 nearly dry but you've got shape then what you're going to do is squeeze like that so you've got a good surface lots of bubbles and I'm going to dab it into the paint I'm using sap green what I would say to you is it's much easier to do it on a shallow palette a flat palette because then you will only pick up the paint that you need if you haven't got a shallow palette and it's more of a scooped palette then try using a little bit of a plate or something like that you can see what I'm picking up here only a little bit you can dab that off a little bit on kitchen towel as well you don't want it to be too strong in this background and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to dab lift off twist the sponge dab lift off twist the sponge so the twisting of the sponge when I've lifted off means that I'm getting variety all the time if you do it in the same direction 
then it, it'll look the same. So you want them to look different. What I'm really focused on is building up some of this foliage in this top half. Now at this point, this foliage always looks a bit floaty, a little bit disjointed, and that's fine because once we get the tree trunks in, it'll all start to come together, but it's, it's, it's important we do this at this point, otherwise it's very, very easy to not get enough foliage in. Now this is, a lot of this is really light, so I'm just going to use the sap green and just build this up. Nice delicate fresh foliage, what you'll find is you use tons of paint, sponging uses tons of paint, so make sure you've got plenty ready and don't be afraid to mix it up, there's nothing worse than trying to scrape around the palette for a tiny bit. Concentrate as well getting the sponging in where you've got those light bits of masking fluid so that that's building up that foliage there. Got some little bits in the background as well. I'm going to dab in, I've just picked up a little bit of the blue, the cobalt blue. I've not rinsed the sponge out, it's still quite dry, I'm only picking up little bits of paint, dab and twist. If you get to a point that everything's merging together, you're better to stop and dry your painting off. So that it doesn't get too wet. So that's just giving it a little bit of definition. Okay, so I've dried that off at the top and I've just mixed up a, a little bit of cobalt blue into my sap green. So I've got a slightly darker colour for the bottom. Um, and we're going to go and do some sponging on the bottom now. So I've rinsed the sponge out really well. In the same way that I did the wet in wet wash, I'm going to start with the purpley colour to keep that nice and fresh. So I've got a little bit on the sponge and I'm going to come in and just work this along. If it seems a bit dark just dab a bit off. So you've got a dab and twist. To, to get that really thin line you need to really squeeze the sponge. Don't be afraid to come over the green a little bit. What you'll find is you have a nice blend. You've got to have that blend there. So I'm just trying to avoid coming over the big tree trunks now, but it's not the end of the world if you do. Coming up to that horizon line, dab, twist, dab, twist. And you just build those up gradually. I'm going to rinse out, squeeze all the water out, dab it on the kitchen towel again to get as much off as possible 
and then I'm going to take a small section again I'm picking up a little bit of the green now this green is a little bit darker now and I'm going to work in between these layers So dab, twist, don't be afraid to blend through the purple a little bit. I'm going to pick up a bit more colour on the sponge and I'm going to go upside down again and on these front sections I'm going to drag it's nice and lightly it's showing on the camera yet I'm going to drag the sponge through so this creates those more defined leaves takes a bit of practice so you can always practice on a bit of paper first but it's a much quicker way than doing it with a brush can always finish off a few after with the brush these need to stay in this front section though And then as you come towards the back, then that's when you can do the dabbing to blend that in. So you don't want a definite, this is this section, this is this section. You need to blend. I'm going to turn that the right way around again. I'll get a nice blend in there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of the green but with more water on the sponge. I'm just going to bring some of this into the path. So I'm dabbing, but I'm sort of dragging in a horizontal stroke as well. So this is going to start to give the path a mottled effect. Because the sponge is quite wet, it's not going to be too strong. So we're using the sponge really as a brush. And we're getting this nice sort of mottled effect. And it's going to take some of that intense colour down a little bit. But it's still going to glow through. That's the beauty of complementary colours. Okay, I'm going to dry that one off. Okay, so what I've started to do is do a few trees. And I'm going to show you a couple so you get the idea um, you don't want to watch me do loads and loads and loads of trees so I'm going to go for this big one because this shows you quite a lot of the technique so I've got my round number 10 and I'm coming on with some gambos yellow so no water straight on with some gambos yellow 
and you're going to bring that down over most of the trunk of the tree but you're just going to do a few little bits where you've got this light foliage then I'm going to dab into a tiny bit of green and some of these is a hint of green so I'm just going to pop that in as well then with my round number six I'm really thick sepia whilst it's still wet I'm going to come in start to get the shape of the tree Now, with all trees, I always say think jaggedy bottom. So if you break in, rather than a straight line, you'll get a really nice effect. Because this is still quite wet, the flow of the paint will make it feel quite cylindrical. Got a bit of a branch coming out here. And then where you've got this masking fluid and all this sponging, you can use it to your advantage and break up the line. And the breaking up of that line will make it feel much more like denser foliage. Take a little bit of a branch out here, it's hidden, and then there's a little bit of a branch coming out here, it's a nice thick paint, bend, take it off. Just try to vary the pressure of your brush. You can come over this bit to make it a bit thicker. It should blend out anyway on there. You see that has a nice effect. You've got a bit of a glow. Come around a little bit of this masking fluid. You've got a really nice effect. So that's a principle for all the trees. If you've got thinner trees somewhere that are coming out, you can just create the branches and you can do a few darker ones. You can turn upside down if you feel it easier to make that point. So you can get those few little ones like that. If you've got a little one, it's the same principle. So I've got one just about here. So this is gambo's yellow going on there isn't really any, any amount of huge amount of green on this one so i'm just going to come in with the dark so this is a sepia down one side and jaggedy bottom just run a little bit of sepia down the other side just to give it a bit of definition and then i can bring out a few branches Remember less is more with something like this. You can always add a bit more sponging if you think you've not got enough sponging. Remember you want to stagger these joints so they're not all together. Make it look as natural as possible. If you have an odd one going a different way that always helps as well. Those are all going in a similar direction so I'll just add a couple going in a different direction just to break that up a bit and then we're going to get this one in just here so nice lot of gambo's yellow again I'm going to take in a bit of the path colour because I can see a hint of the path colour in this one 
so we're going to have a hint of the path colour instead of the green and then come in with the sepia again now because I've got masking fluid at the bottom of this one I've got quite a jaggedy bottom already just bring some of this colour sepia through this gives you an opportunity to indent with a bit of credit card like we did last week as well because this one's got quite a lot of detail on the bark so I'm just running whilst it's still wet corner of a bit of plastic credit card over and that's just indenting that and giving it a nice little bit of texture from so that all, all of a sudden that pulls it together just having these trees in here just starts to pull it together so I'm going to dry that bit off okay so what I'm doing now is using the green mix which is the sap green and cobalt blue I'm making sure that these bits of masking fluid aren't floating so I'm running stems or leaves up beneath them so this is giving an extra bit of detail and definitions. This is just with my round number 10. I'm not being too precise. I'm just thinking leaves and stems and I need it to feel a little bit more dense. So I'm just bringing those in. I'm afraid to turn around if it's helping you to get the right angle. I'm going to bring a few. We've got a base from the sponging already so this is just giving it a little bit more detail and a bit more depth I'm using around number 10 but you could use whatever brush you wanted to for this so that's giving it a lot more depth in there in that front section with that green as well so make sure that it's nice and watery on the brush I'm just going to look at these highlights that I can see so I can see shadows and highlights so I'm just going to bring that mainly across the path so that I start to get those indications of light it's always what makes a picture So just make sure the green's quite watery at that stage. And just bring that across and that's just going to give you those shadows. Horizontal strokes. If you weren't so keen on the green at this stage you could use a little bit of the purple colour that would work as well but it's just about showing that there's some areas of light so I haven't wet that at all I've just taken the watered down green solution through And that's just giving that indication of those lovely little bits of light there
Okay, I'll dry that off and take the masking fluid off. I just wanted to show you a quick little tip um, just to make this stand out a little bit more. So what I've done is I've just taken some sepia in just in places in this front section just to help it stand out and then with a clean wet brush you can just soften in that edge into the path. Just make sure when you're doing this that you don't lose those shadows you just put in. So don't go and eliminate a shadow softening in over a light bit. And that's just giving the path a little bit more depth on those edges. I'm going to take a little bit in here, look, as well. And just soften that in. Again, horizontal stroke. Okay. Okay, so I've got all the masking fluid off here now. I'm going to just come in with a bit of the gambo's yellow. If when you do this and you take the masking fluid off, you think, oh, that's a big chunk, then come over with the gambo's yellow, let that dry, and then you can sponge back over it and you'll get that broken up effect. It can sometimes be a bit hit and miss masking fluid. So don't worry if it's sponging hides a multitude of sins. So you can keep coming over. But you want to try and preserve as much of this light that you've gained by taking this masking fluid off now. So if I just show you what I mean with the sponging, to just get a bit of green, you can just break it up and come over and break up the, the blobbiness of it if you want to. Mine's not too bad, I quite like it. But it's it can still always benefit from having a tiny bit over. Okay, so that's those top sections. On the bottom sections, you want to make sure you've got a nice clean brush and some of your purple colour. If you really want to make it stand out, you can add a little bit of rose on its own. That works quite nicely. But keep these nice and pale. Make sure your brush is clean. There's always a hazard at this last point that you, you muck it all up with your brush. Being a bit dirty. So I'm just picking up a little bit of rose. So I've got a mix of tonally what these are going to look like. It's quite hard to come over all of them. If you've got a bit of white, don't worry. It tends to work quite nicely as a highlight. And now come over this side. Just make sure it's not too thick. And then come over all of these. So this is quite rosy, so I'm going to come into a little bit more blue. Again, if you've got any big blobby areas, you can break it up with a bit of sponging. At this point, if you haven't got enough masking fluid, you can come on with a bit of acrylic, a bit of acrylic ink, a bit of oil pastel like we did the other week. So you can add to it if you want to. And there we go. That's pretty much done. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next week. Bye.